Welcome back to the foundry. Well, as you see, I've got the rammer up in the shop, and today's video is going to be another in the series covering some common problems with the 5.9 24 valve specifically. Now, I, I'm not currently experiencing any problems with mine. In fact, it's it's been perfect. Uh, so today's video is going to be an upgrade that's going to help me keep it that way. <laughs> Now, if a 24 valve were to ever get a bad rap about something, it's going to be the VP44 injector pump. They're prone to fail, and when they do, it's very expensive. So to mitigate that, we're going to do an upgrade on this truck. It's actually not the, the IP that is the initial problem. That's just a down-the-line issue that happens. The initial problem is always, more than likely, the lift pump. And you can't see it, it's back there on the back of the engine block. Well, it's on the driver's side toward the rear. So the issue is that factory Carter lift pump is suboptimal. It just doesn't put up enough uh, volume and pressure to really keep these pumps cool because it's the flow of diesel fuel that allows this uh, VP44 to cool itself. What happens is the pump gets weak or fails altogether and if you keep trying to drive it, uh, the, the IP just burns itself up. And I think the worst case scenario is the Carter lift pump gets weak. Instead of just failing outright where you know, okay, something's wrong, stop driving it, figure it out. They'll get weak and you won't realize it. But under hard acceleration, pulling a trailer, things like this, it's not producing enough volume and pressure to keep that pump cool. And you're really short living the life of that pump. So there's a couple ways you can handle this. Uh, you can get an aftermarket kit uh, from FAST or AirDog, and it basically eliminates your entire stock fuel system, relocates the pump back by the tank because pumps are better at pushing than they are pulling. It also comes with advanced filtration through two big spin-on filters. You got a particulate filter and a water separator. Now, if my truck was, if it had performance mods, that's the kit I would be going with. Uh, in my case, my truck is totally stock. There are zero performance mods, and I plan to keep it that way uh, for a lot of reasons. One is it still has, I believe, the original 47RE transmission, and I'm, I don't want to push my luck with that. Transmission is shifting great. Everything works as it should. I want to keep it that way. So what I decided to go with is a factory replacement pump that is uh, much superior quality than the factory Carter style pump. And uh, the reason I went with it, again, my truck's stock, so I don't need just the super duper, super expensive kit. This pump will bolt right in place of the factory, of the factory pump. I don't have to run new lines and, and mounting brackets back on the frame and tap into the tank and all that mess. My factory system, or excuse me, my factory line We'll go in the inlet side of this pump and for the outlet the pump comes with uh, it's essentially a bigger line that goes from the pump to my factory fuel filter housing which i will be keeping and uh, of course i run good filters in that and change them frequently in addition to this i got uh, what's called a big line kit and this is the line that goes from the fuel filter housing to the vp44 ip and uh, being half inch over, I don't know what's in there, like quarter inch or something, I'm not sure. But this is significantly bigger, just allows for more flow. Uh, the fittings that come with it are, uh, they're 90s, but they're not hard 90s. They're smooth 90, again, with a focus on uh, superior flow. Also, I picked up this kit from, uh, I can't remember, Glow Shift or or uh, Pensacola diesel somebody uh, this is an LED light that I can mount on the dash there's a sensor that will go in line with my big line kit and that will let me know if I lose fuel pressure or it gets below a certain threshold I think like 5 psi if I drop below that under acceleration I know hey something's going on either my fuel filters getting clogged up or the pumps getting weak this lets me know to stop driving the truck and figure out the issue that way I don't just inadvertently burn up my injector pump. So even with the factory style replacement pumps, you do have a couple of options. 
Uh, Fast makes one. Uh, in my case, I went with the, uh, what is this thing, a Raptor. I believe it's from uh, Pure Flow Air Dog, Air Dog Raptor Pump. Uh, it had really good reviews. I actually don't remember. I've, I've actually had this thing for a while now, just now getting around to putting it on. I can't remember why I went with this one over the Fast. I think they're both good options. They're both similarly priced. Uh, there was some reason, I just can't think of it. Uh, this one does have an exterior adjustment for a uh, fuel pressure regulator. I don't believe the FAST has that. I'm not sure if that's why I went with it. I can't remember. But it's a good pump. It's got good reviews. Uh, it should be vastly superior to the factory pump. In fact, this one puts out 100 gallons per hour. Uh, it's the FRRP 100. They make a 150 if you've got more performance mods. I don't have any, and uh, this one, if I do want to put a programmer or something on it, this one will handle that just fine. I bought this pump from Thoroughbred Diesel. Uh, I bought stuff from them in the past when I had my power stroke and was happy with them. I bought the Big Line kit from Glowshift, and I bought the, uh, the fuel pressure indicator kit from Pensacola Diesel. And uh, so let's get busy. Let's get this stuff installed. Okay, so I just removed the factory pump without removing anything else. Really kind of shocked me because the instructions say I have to remove this air horn and I have to remove the factory uh, fuel filter housing. I didn't want to do that if I didn't have to because it's going to make it that much harder to bleed the system once I get everything back and the new stuff installed. Also, someone's honking a horn. Also, I just recently replaced that fuel filter, so I just don't want to get into all that if I don't have to. Now, going back in with the new stuff, I may learn why they want you to take all that off, but from everything I can see, that is not necessary. I was able to put my arm up under the Hydra Boost uh, and access the pump quite easily, and so that's what I did. And this took literally less than five minutes. Unhook the factory fuel line, uh, quick connect right here, unhook the uh, banjo bolt up on top of the fuel filter housing, unhook my wire, three bolts hold this to the bracket that mounts to the engine, or nuts rather, I think they're 12 millimeter, and then a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the, uh, the steel part of this factory line. This will be reused, uh, the rest of this uh, not. So I, I removed the banjo fitting from the original pump, fun fact, this was only hand tight. <laughs> this banjo bolt was only hand tight. I can't believe it wasn't leaking. I've been driving it that way. Who knows how many miles is on that. Uh, so anyway, now's a good time to replace uh, your thread seals for the banjo bolt. Comes with the kit. So I'm going to replace these and install it on the inlet side of the new pump. I have the new thread seal installed on the banjo bolt. Just a little tip, when you go to install the thread seals, uh, don't push them over the threads. Twist it on there as if you're threading it on there. That'll keep you from damaging that rubber, which is very important to keep that intact. Now that I've got the uh, original inlet line uh, connected to the pump, I did not tighten it down all the way because I'm going to need to be able to orient that thing properly. Once, it's, once the pump is installed, then I'll tighten it down. I also have the outlet fitting installed and the pump will utilize two of the three original bolt holes in the mounting bracket. So I should be able to shove this thing up in there, zip these two down, tighten that after I connect it to the original fuel line, and we should be good for the next step. All right, new lift pump installed. I've got it uh, there on that factory bracket. Don't know how much you can see, actually. You should be able to see that Raptor sticker down there. That's, that's the location. Uh, we've got my inlet line hooked up and uh, electrical hooked up. Now we're gonna run the big line kit from the pump to the filter housing. It'll come right in the top here. This is a 99, so it's got this style of uh, fuel filter housing. I think in 2000, they went to a different style. But so far, everything has been super easy, like scary easy. I've been putting this off for months because I thought due to the location of that pump and having to bleed everything, if I were to take that filter housing apart and all that. I just figured this would be kind of a pain in the neck, so I've been putting it off, but man, so far, 
uh, got the pump swapped out in like 15 minutes total from removing the old one to putting that one in there uh, this is just going too easy so uh, yeah, let's keep at it and see what happens so here's you can see the contrast in the diameter between the new uh, fitting versus the old uh, fitting and tube it's going to be substantially larger to facilitate more volume and you can see the difference in the lines themselves you can almost fit that old steel line all the way inside of the new big line Here's the half inch line installed. <clears throat> I think I showed you the 3 8 earlier when I was comparing it to that steel line. 3 8 line is actually going to be the big line kit to the VP44. This is a half inch line from the lift pump to the filter housing. And uh, I didn't have to trim any off of this hose. And the way I've got it routed is uh, there's not a lot of excess. I mean, uh, I didn't want any real hard angles. So I just kind of looped it like that and it came in from the rear. You could also come up through the front, but since I'm fixing to be working up here, I didn't want to, you know, block that. So I didn't have to trim it. These are what they call quick lock fittings. And according to the instructions, I don't need a hose clamp on that hose. So what I'm going to do now, the pump, the lift pump is done. I don't know why they said you had to remove the filter housing. I think that's foolhardy because this is going to make it harder to bleed. <clears throat> Before I replace the line going to the injector pump, I'm going to go ahead and bleed this line and run that pump and crank the truck if it will and uh, run this thing. That way I'm sure I've got no air from the pump to the filter and uh, it'll make it that much easier to bleed after I put the big line on. If I do it all at once, there's going to be a lot of air to have to bleed out of that system. That'll put me at probably having to, even if I bleed at the banjo bolt on the VP44, that's going to put me at probably having to bleed at the injectors, which will require somebody to be in the truck cranking on it. And I work alone, so there's nobody here. Didn't want to have to deal with that. So I'm going to do one piece at a time, bleed it one piece at a time, and hopefully that'll just make it easier on me. That is the most quiet fuel pump <clears throat> I've ever heard. In fact, I had to look twice to make sure it was even running. Um, so I bumped the key, it ran for 30 seconds, fired the truck up, and it hasn't missed a lick. So uh, one little thing that I found that kind of sucks is I'm developing a fuel leak from around this grommet, which appears to be uh, the wires for the fuel heater. Looks like it's been seeping for years and I think maybe the added pressure and volume from that new pump, it uh, seems like it's leaking a little more than it, it used to. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that and probably fix that, uh, which sucks because <laughs> I was trying to avoid having to pull that to start with, but uh, it's gonna have to come off in the, probably next time I change the fuel filter, I'll go ahead and do that as long as it doesn't get any worse. Now I'm going to remove this factory line to the injector pump. If I can do it without breaking the brake reservoir. And the other end is over here on the IP. Now I just fish this line out of here. And this is the spindly little factory line. Now these are the stainless fittings that are, one's going to go on the top of the filter housing or bottom depending on what year you have. And the other one's going to go in the side of the IP. I like to put a little oil on these O-rings before I install them.
I randomly decided to check my uh, fluid in the power steering because my hand was right there and I don't recall having done that recently. It's a good thing I did because it was very low. Okay, I got my 90 on down there. That's the black shiny thing in the camera down there. There's a wire loom right over the top of it. But coming out of the IP, got my hose hooked to it up top here. Haven't hooked the hose up yet, but I got the 90 installed. Haven't tightened it. And uh, right now I'm going to take and cut this hose to install the fuel pressure sensor. My sensor installed here in line. Now I've heard it said these kind of fittings do not require hose clamps, but the kit came with them. They're pretty high quality hose clamps, so I just went ahead and used them. But uh, the pump didn't come with any, and it's a very similar type of fitting. But uh, since I came with it, I'm gonna go ahead and use them. So now all I gotta do is hook that back up there, tighten that. And uh, I place this sensor in a manner that uh, is easy to get to. Also, um, I ran the big line out this way instead of cutting straight up to the filter housing because this still facilitates my ability to check my uh, power steering fluid. Had I run it the shortest distance, I would have had to take this big line off just to check my power steering fluid. I don't want to do that, so I clocked the fitting upward and it comes right through here, leaves me a perfect hole to reach in here and pull that dipstick. And uh, I don't think I'm going to interfere with anything over here. Uh, it may be a little more fun to change the fuel filter with this here, but uh, not, a, not a huge deal, I don't think. All right, the big, the big line kit is fully installed. Everything is tight. Fuel pressure sensor right where I want it. And I noticed when I pulled the banjo bolt off to replace that factory line, I did lose a significant amount of diesel out of the pump. So the instructions say to cycle the pump uh, three to five times. That's three to five 30 second cycles. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna see if it'll fire up. So to achieve a 30 second cycle, you just bump the starter. Do not let the truck start like so, and I'm gonna show you just how quiet this fuel pump is. It's running right now. I don't know if you can hear it. It is sitting there running. It is so much more quiet than that factory style Carter pump. Well, I thought I had my camera turned on. So basically I cycled it five times then I had to crank on it for about six to eight seconds usually it just bust off you know but I had to crank on it for about six to eight seconds it fired up ran a little rough then smoothed out and we're golden so right now I'm just checking for leaks good everything's nice and dry okay the only thing left to do is wire in my LED light and uh, the way this thing works this is a uh, pressure switch basically they're calling it a sensor switch but uh, the if the fuel pressure drops below 5 psi it allows the switch to to ground and uh, that activates the light so really what this is is just a ground so I run one wire from this switch into the cab to one leg of this LED and the other leg I wire to key on 12 volts and I'm going to achieve that through the fuse panel on the inside. It comes with a fuse tap. This is a uh, that pink one there. That's a fuse tap. And so I can find a key on hot fuse and go to that and then it's uh, just I got to drill a quarter inch hole in the dash somewhere and plug in this light somewhere visible you know and uh, that's really all there is to it okay those of you who are sharp or have done this before 
will have already caught the mistake that I made. I just caught it as I was explaining how that switch worked, and I feel like an idiot. So this, this achieves the ground when the pressure drops below 5 PSI, and it just occurred to me, duh, where I have it mounted, there is no ground. It's mounted to a rubber hose. So what I'm gonna have to do, this is a 99 model, so I have a test port right there that's normally where you would put a fuel pressure gauge. I'm gonna have to relocate my switch to that port right there because this housing is grounded. That's the only way it'll be able to achieve a ground. So this T fitting that I have in here is still not gonna go to waste. I'm gonna plug it off, but this will be an excellent spot to uh, put a fuel pressure gauge in the event that I need to do some diagnostics. Instead of putting the gauge there, I'm gonna have my switch there. We'll put the gauge there. So all is not lost. It's just, I'm gonna have to cap that off. Boom, that's a little more better. Kind of, but not really. I mean, ideally you would want your sensor to be as close to the IP as possible. That's why I put it in that line to start with. But it'll work, it's good enough. Um, got this plugged off, so I could, I could plumb in a uh, fuel pressure gauge right there anytime I want to, so that's nice. Got my wire run inside through a grommet in the cab, it was super easy. I'll show you where I put the light. And it's dark as the dickens in here. But I mounted that light right here. Let's see if we can make it illuminate. I think it won't because I just primed the system. Theoretically, as soon as you turn the key on, it should flash. There it is. And then when that pump cycles, it'll, well, hopefully it shuts off after we, after we crank it up. Yep, it goes off. Perfect. Now it could be my imagination I'm ready to admit that. But if I didn't know better, I'd say the throttle response is a little more snappy. I could be dreaming, but uh, it kind of feels that way. So in closing, this was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know why I put it off for so long, but I kid you not, I, I had that old lift pump out in five minutes max. Um, it just didn't take long to put the new one in either and uh, same for running these lines I don't know what the what they're talking about having to remove that fuel filter housing. I didn't touch any of that I didn't remove the air horn and I got all this done very easily In fact, it took longer to wire in this uh, LED light to the fuel pressure switch than it did to do the whole project uh, so If you're considering something like this man do it. Uh, it's super simple and I didn't have to bleed the injectors the way I went about it, so that worked out really well. Now I think it would be most optimal to have a full-time fuel pressure gauge in the truck on the dash. Uh, I thought about that, but I just couldn't find one that I liked, uh, certainly not in a uh, feasible price range. Those things, just the gauge was like $200, and that didn't include a way to mount it, any of the wiring or the sensor or anything. And I just thought, you know, it'd be so much easier just to run this LED light you're accomplishing the same thing. Yes, it would be nice to see the fuel pressure, but eh, I'm pretty well happy with it just the way it is. So that was the last little mod that I intend to do to this truck, at least in the foreseeable future. Mechanically, it's very sound. Bumper to bumper, everything on it works. So I'm just gonna put the thing to work and enjoy driving it. So anyway, if you got anything out of this, enjoy the old truck content, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next one.